Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of what we're talking about on Wednesday. What time? Um, so today is January 29th to 2020. And if you are current and up to date, I mean, I don't know how you couldn't be, but the first thing I want to talk about is the death of legendary basketball player Kobe Bryant and his daughter Gianna. Um, the, I don't know what to say about it other than I was completely taken, obviously, you know, a sudden death of anybody was kind of shocked, but I was like completely taken aback because if, I mean, I, I know Kobe as being a basketball player, a father, a husband, um, you know, actively trying to be and do better as a man and as a husband and as a father. And, you know, to hear that he just died suddenly after retiring from basketball, knowing that he was trying to, you know, give back. It's kind of like, ouch, like it's a kick to the gut. And then to know that he died with his daughter. Um, I can only think of what they were thinking about in those moments and then what his wife thought after hearing the news. I mean, I can't conceptualize what she's going through right now. Um, so my heart goes out to her and her family and to all of the diehard, you know, fans of Kobe Bryant. I'm, I'm not going to pretend like I was. Um, I did like him as a person. So uh, my, you know, my thoughts and prayers go out to everybody who's mourning the loss. I cried for him because hearing other people cry for someone that they love and that they admire and that they've lost is hard to hear for anybody. But going past that and dealing with or hearing about and thinking about how people have reacted to the death of Kobe Bryant has been difficult. You have comedians, comedians, if you want to call them comedians, going on, on you know, online, live and talking about how he got his. Mm. And then you have newscasters referring to him, the Lakers with the n-word accidentally hmm and then you have news journalists going on twitter and you know retweeting articles about how he's a cheater and got away with rape and all this kind of shit it's like really now is the time you want to talk about something like this the man you know dealt with his past and was trying to move forward and make uh, a better legacy for himself and was in the process of doing that and when somebody dies that doesn't mean it's up to you to go in get, and dig into their past to talk shit about them. That makes no sense. It's disrespectful. This These people were human. So yes, they had errors and flaws, but they passed away. So now was the time to let the people who are mourning them, mourn them in peace. Like, how, how are you people thinking that this is okay to do when there is a mother and two, ch three children mourning the loss of their family members, important integral parts of their family. How do you sleep at night knowing that it's okay or, or feeling like it's okay to do that? I have no words for the scum of, for, uh, you know, the scum who think that it's funny or justified or reasonable to do that during this time. People's lives have been lost a father was lost, a husband was lost, a brother was lost, Fam you know, families were lost. Be respectful and let people mourn without trying to dig up their past to remind people why you don't think they were good people or good enough to be mourned. Like, I don't, I don't, I can't, I can't conceptualize that. So moving past the negativity, you know, there were the Grammys on the weekend and uh, Kobe and his daughter and, and others passed away on Sunday. So the Grammys scrambled to sort of pay tribute. And I think Alicia Key Keys did a fantastic job of that. Um, her her ability to adapt to the situation and, and show true emotion was a, a great thing for people who were kind of still tuning in, you know? Um, next, talking about the Grammys, we're looking at Demi Lovato. Demi Lovato, for the first time, performed since... Um, being, I guess, since relapsing and then being sober again, beautiful. Um, uh, she had a moment where she kind of felt emotional because I guess this is a song she's singing 
about her experience. I think Debbie Lovato is amazing and I think she's come a long way. I think a lot of people over exaggerate on her skill. I'm not sure why, but she's good. She's good, you know? Um, and I'm happy that she's sober. That's what I was most concerned with. When I watched her documentary, I was most concerned with her health, her happiness, and um, overall just being being, being clean and, and, and moving forward in her life. So congratulations to her and to all the people who won in the Grammys. I didn't really watch the Grammys because I don't know who watches award shows anymore other than to judge them. And I don't really want to spend that much time just like take notes to judge people. I'll just go on Twitter and on Instagram and, you know, Google it and I'll get all the information I need. So there was that. I don't want to speak on the winners because I don't have much opinions on the winners. Um, some of the winners anyway. So yeah, there's that. Uh, let me check my notes. Oh, final thing I want to talk about really quick. This is going to be a short and sweet, uh, what we're talking about on Wednesday. Uh, David Schwimmer, or AKA Ross from Friends, um, decided that he wanted to sort of make a grand suggestion that since people want Friends to be rebooted so bad, he'd like to see um, a cast of all black actors reboot Friends or all Asian actors reboot Friends. And if you are my age or older, I'm 31, then you know that Friends was the white reboot of the original Friends, Living Single. Now, if you don't know Living Single, you can look it up. It started before Friends. It was four women and two men all lived in a brownstone apartment in New York. They were they were all successful. They all kind of intermingled all the time and dated. Uh, they were they were neighbors. Um. So for, <laughs> I, I'm gonna assume. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt and assume that he did not know that Living Single was um, the original Friends. But at the same time, there's a clip of Queen Latifah talking to James Corden on his show. And James Corden acknowledges that Living Single was first and that the producer of or the CEO of some company that, that Friends was on was asked if there was a show that he could have or recreate what would it be and he said living single and thus a year later friends was born so um david schwimmer are, are you saying that you want them to reboot living single to come back because while friends was amazing and had a long running and has diehard fans myself included don't get it twisted i love me some phoebe and some joey and some ross but do you want them to recreate Living Single? Or do you want them to reboot Friends, but Black people? How about interraced people of all kinds? Um, it's like people sometimes forget how much they steal or copy. And everybody wants to say, oh, copying is the, what is it? It's the uh, biggest compliment. Eh, it depends. Living Single didn't get the recognition, the love, the Netflix run that Friends has. And when I try to find uh, Living Single online, I damn near can't find it. But you can find Friends right there on uh, Netflix for you, on TV still. Imitation can be complimentary, but it also can be a thief. And I think Friends stole what Living Single started. And Living Single did not last as long. And I think it's crap. Um, I don't want to bash David Schwimmer too much because I'm going to truly try to believe that he was coming from a place of ignorance. But at the same time, really? I don't know, guys. The news, this I find that in 2020, the news is just overall, not, not in 2020, sorry. Every January, the news is just depressing. I don't know if it's coming, it's because we're coming down from the high of Christmas and the new year and the celebrations and the parties, but I find January is always filled with natural disasters, deaths, and just overall depressing shit. Anyway, I don't want to be any more depressing than January already is. I'm looking forward to Black History Month. I'm looking forward to February. I'm looking forward to packing because your girl is moving. 
other than that this has been another episode of what we're talking about on wednesday i'll see y'all next week